I found out I was pregnant when I was in my at the end of my final at the end of my second year in poly. She immediately called my dad home from work and then we kind of sat down and talked about it. But at first they weren't very supportive of it to be honest. Their first reaction was to uh, call the abortion clinic for the next morning for an appointment. So when he came back, um, I was I, I thought that he would be excited. So I said, hey, I'm pregnant with our second child. They said, who do you slept with? Ah. But I said, no, you were away for like two weeks only. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, how I had my daughter. I think I've had her under some very um, horrible circumstances. It was rape. Uh, and uh... Um, I think other than that, it's just <laughs> um, kind of like showing more care and love, maybe. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joe Kim. I'm 43 this year. Uh, uh, my marriage ended around 2017 and uh, the proceedings took a little bit longer, so it concluded in around 2019. Uh, I have a seven-year-old daughter. Uh, she just entered primary one this year. Yeah. Hi, I'm Natalia. I'm 40 years old. I am a single mom. I have a five-year-old daughter. I have kidney failure, so I'm on dialysis. and. I work full time. So I lost my husband uh, 10 years back in 2012. My initial thought was how can I support my kids financially, emotionally, and protect them from the shock they have received at this early age. Culturally, being an Indian person, to be pregnant under such circumstances is a highly disgraceful thing. You have no idea if you're even made out to be a mother, you know, you have there's just, I was scared, I was terrified at 27. I was like, what am I doing, you know? And I wanted to throw my kid out the window, I really did. Um. It got to the point where I couldn't even go to the nearby bus stop without wanting to like puke. So I had to tell my teacher that I'm so sorry I had to like take a deferment from school for a year and then um, I will come back after that to like finish my studies. Uh, as she start to grow up, uh, she tend to compare with her friends in school. And of course, she often asked me this question like, uh, why you and mommy are not staying together? It was quite, was honestly quite difficult to explain to her. Uh, and, and I think uh, till today, she still hope the two parents will reconcile. I heard about Daughters of Tomorrow, um, this organization for women and I emailed them. And in my email, I said, help. And the next day um, in the morning, somebody called me. And the first thing that person said was, are you okay? Are you safe? Those words, nobody has ever asked me if I was safe in any of my situations. So when I heard that, it was just, I let myself break down and I open up the primary support I got, the emotional support I got from my family back in India, but none of them were here. Through my doctor, actually, he referred me to uh, connect to We Care, which is a support group for the new widows. So when I connected with We Care, that is the first time I realized that my grief is finally understood. My issues are finally resolved because I have seen so many other widows, other ladies, who are going through the similar journey as me or maybe sometimes even more challenging than me. Initially when the marriage uh, fell apart, I turned to the FSCs for help. So uh, I needed somebody to talk to. So there were, I was glad that the FSC was there. Uh, the counsellor was always available for me to, to uh, make an appointment, walk in and have a chat with them. Mr Amrin refers me to, um, to the Family Service Centre who after that uh, contacted me to go for counselling sessions. Because I never open up to everyone, so I only have my counsellor uh, that I share with yeah, towards the whole journey. And it's been like, uh, how many years? 2016 until now, 
I'm still seeing the same counsellor. The initial person that I reached out to in that moment's thought of abortion was a pregnancy, pregnancy crisis uh, contact. And I picked up the phone and she was like, I don't care where you are, uh, you come to us tomorrow. And she made a very uh, quick, immediate appointment with me. Now I am a staff of Daughters of Tomorrow. So I have made a full circle from beneficiary to volunteer to an intern and then staff of uh, Daughters of Tomorrow. Single parenting journey is overwhelming. So please go and ask for the help. There are many good souls around there who are willing to help as long as you ask for it. And if there's one advice that I would give, it would be to be okay to say that, okay, I need help. It's okay to reach out for help. I think it's very important not to hold on to your children uh, too, too, too hard. The best we could ever do is really uh, to equip them with the life skills to cope with the life's challenges. Just know that you're not alone, that there are a lot of women out there that have similar stories and uh, going through similar stuff. And, you know, you are welcome to come and join us in our support groups. Yeah, and yeah, come and join us. Community has made a very uh, big impact in my life. There are people within the community that have said very few things that have made an impact for me. Community can be the social networks that you have, or it could be your friends. Choose the right kind of community. Um, make sure that they are making positive and, in and increments of good, good effects in your children. You see that naturally and organically as well.